you feeling about getting the nomination? Yeah, um, something that I wasn't really thinking about, but it sort of just sort of just happened and caught me off guard a little bit. But yeah, um, it's good to get a little bit of recognition for you know, how you're playing. But um, yeah, you don't really play for stuff like that. But yeah, we're getting wins, so yeah, pretty happy lately. Aside from being a number one or number two draft pick, probably there's a lot of pressure on a kid that comes in and the Dags and Eagles legend. Have you felt like you've handled that pressure at this stage? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's it's caught up with me like or caught up with me when I was a young fella, but as the years have gone on, I sort of learned how to deal with it. Um, yeah, last year obviously didn't play that much footy, so it sort of died down a little bit. And then since I've started playing, it's sort of risen a little bit. But um, yeah, I think I've handled it pretty well. I mean. Well, once you're out there on the field, nothing really affects me off the field, so you're just, just playing footy. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really think too much about that. When you were named for your debut, you were thinking, oh, when Josh comes back, I'm probably out. But that hasn't been the case. You've, you've played pretty well to keep the spot. Yeah, I think that's what I, I thought that may have happened, and I think a lot of people thought that was going to happen as well. But um, I was just focusing on playing some good footy. and. Um, yeah, when JK came back, I was you know, able to keep my spot on the team, which is good. But you know, we did have a couple of other injuries, which may have helped me stay in the team. But I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about you know if I can get a game, then I'm just going to give it everything I can. Having missed so much pre last year, how have you managed to settle straight in way? Or what's been the key behind that? Oh, I think just a good pre-season. Um, yeah, I was able to get through pre-season pretty injury-free and have a good crack at that and get some fitness. So you know, when when the scratches started and the JLT started, I was able to build my fitness, build my fitness up and. Yeah, getting into round one, and I think my body's held, holding up pretty well, and I'm um, pretty fit at the moment. So, yeah, hopefully, um, stay injury free. Jake, what did you make of your first derby? Did it feel like the pressure was up a level? Oh yeah, from the moment we ran out, it, it was just everyone was booing, and sort of had a look around. A few of the boys were laughing. It was a bit of a shock because when I mean, usually playing at home, you you usually, usually get the loud cheers, and you tell everyone's you know behind you. But um, yeah, it was a pretty hostile environment to start with, and they obviously had a pretty good first quarter. So. Um, we knew we had our work cut out for us, so we just had to keep grinding away. And yeah, we're pretty lucky to come out with a win. And yeah, the boys are great. Did it fire you up? Like you said, you handled it really well. Yeah, I think the boys used it as a bit of bit of energy. And you know, when, when there's, there was a few Eagles fans there, which helped. But um, uh, when you're in environments like that, you sort of got to create your own energy. And I think it probably took us a quarter to do so. And you know, when we had our chances, you know, our, en our energy rose, and then they yeah, sort of died off a little bit. So um, yeah, it was good. Talk about energy, Jake. Do you sort of feel as a young player responsibility to bring that? Simo talks about it a lot about you guys, your enthusiasm and energy around the squad. Yeah, um, I wouldn't wouldn't say that we take responsibility on it, but um, yeah, it's something that um, has come up lately. And oh, it's just just being yourself, really. And, and if if I'm going to bring energy, um, just being myself. And yeah, for sure. And I think a few of the other young boys as well definitely do that. Something to focus on this year within the club. Did Simo speak to you? Before? Uh, well, yeah, when JK was injured um, late last year, I had surgery. Um, yeah, he had a word and a couple other guys had a word with me that, you know, if, I'm, if there's a spot up for grabs at the start of the year and I've just got to do everything I can to get that. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's sort of that new era sort of feeling coming to the club at the moment. So it's good to be able to get, you know, four or five young guys debut early on in the year and be able to keep our spots and have an impact. How's the body feeling, JK? I don't think you did a uh, yeah, I was, I was a little bit sick last week, that's, that's probably why, but now the body's holding up all right. Um, fingers crossed I can you know, stay, stay injury free and keep playing. You don't feel like you should rest or anything like the last time young guys? No, I'm not having a rest. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I've got, had my crack and just just makes me even more hungry to stay out there and you know, keep playing because um, yeah, I, I don't feel that you know, rest is needed unless I'm really, really buggered, but you know, I'm feeling pretty fresh at the moment. What advice has the old man given to you? Like you're uh, following in the footsteps of your dad now. Does it feel a bit like that? You're sort of coming, you're coming behind the friendship Um Oh, well, he, he's, he's set a pretty pretty big legacy at the club. So, yeah, just um, I, would, I, would, I don't think about it too much, but maybe one day when my career's finished, I'll be able to sit back and you know compare, compare the pair. But, um, yeah, if I can have half career like he did, yeah, I'd be happy, mate. Do you feel comfortable? You're starting to feel like you belong in the team now. You're getting that sort of sense of it. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, playing in the team. I think it's six. Played six games, so it's about building consistency. And um, for me, gaining the trust of the other boys and, and the coaching staff is pretty critical to me. And 
knowing that when I play that they know what they're going to get out of me. So um, yeah, definitely feel more um, getting more used to the, the AFL level. What's your game? How hard is that, that defensive play you have to do as well as being tall forward? You, you have to do both roles. Don't you? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I've used to being a tall forward for you know, my juniors and stuff and coming as a team where. Um, there's backup Ruckman playing forward, you've got JK and JD playing down there. You've sort of got to play out the ground a little bit and it's something that I'm getting more used to. But um, I think the defensive stuff has always come naturally to me and I'm sort of you know, finding, finding my little role in the team as sort of the third tall forward that can um, apply good defensive pressure and get up and back. So, um, yeah, it's something that defensive um, stuff definitely brings you into the game as well. So something I like to yeah, do well. What's the order? It goes JK first, then JD, and then you guys all fight out the third spot? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I think JK is the king at the moment. But, um, yeah, uh, JK, JD, the big dogs. But no, it doesn't really matter, mate. We don't really think of it like that. But, um, yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of um, talk about how the game's played these days. You, you got drafted the year where anti-density laws came into Colts. Was it hard to adjust to... Playing one style of footy and the year you were drafted into a vastly different style of footy for AFL? Yeah, um, it did come into the Colts, but in saying that, I don't think it was held too seriously. Um, I don't think it, um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't held that seriously, so I, I don't really think into it that much. Um, yeah, I guess the, the, the style was trying to be changed, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really look into it like that. Man. You take us into the household, uh, sitting around the dining table after a game and what muddy, and even your mum, do they say only positive things or is there some negative stuff in there that you need to work on from their point of view? Uh, they're actually pretty good after a game when I come home. They don't, they don't speak about footy too much, which is good. I just like to chill out, put my feet up, but um, Dad will probably say, say something pretty quickly, but then yeah, he doesn't really... He doesn't really come up, get up in my face and say what I did wrong, what I did right, and you know, mum will give me a hug and stuff. And um, yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing like that really. Um, if dad has something to say about the game, we'll probably give it a couple of days and um, then have a chat. But he knows that we've got. He was a coach once, so we know we've got plenty of coaches here telling me what to do. So he sort of, sort of likes to take a back seat and be more of a parent than sort of a coach that, that he used to be. So is the pressure at home, not knowing you don't have to worry about that, that sort of stuff. Oh yeah, oh, I, I've never felt pressure, which is a good thing. Um, that my dad, dad's been great about that. Um, he's never, he's never been like that, which is great. Who's a better mark, Jack, you or your dad? Oh, he's taking some pretty good ones, but he's taking good hangers. I've taken good contested ones, so I don't know if I can get up as high as he did. I'll be pretty, pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh, there's still a couple of photos around hanging up at home, but um, yeah, whenever it comes up, he'll give me a wink and a nod. Say so get up there one day, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, he always has a little smart remark every now and then.